All right, Lav, here we are. It is the Live Golf Team Championship at the Rowell. I'm down in Miami. You're back at home. But we're going to take a look at the entire season. We've held seven events, and we're going to start with the winners, and then we will make our way to the losers. Who's your winner in this entire scenario? First of all, I thought this was the Live Media Center, and I was disappointed here. Nah, uh, it is just your hotel. For the first winner, the Hotel Rex, bar. Of course. Can you, can you pull me one of those uh, Havana loggers? Uh, sure. The first winner is Eugenio Shikara. And the way I look at this, Rex, is what could have been. Eugenio Shikara could have returned to Oklahoma State for his senior season. He could have tried to turn pro. Maybe he gets a couple of sponsor exemptions. Maybe he plays well enough to get into the Corn Ferry Tour finals. But more than likely, he would have been scraping for status on the Corn Ferry Tour in 2023. Instead, he goes to live. He has banked now $6.12 million. He's learned how to be a pro. He's learning from Sergio Garcia and Dustin Johnson and Cam Smith. And so I think this would prove to be a very attractive option for college players. When you extrapolate this out, he's probably going to bank somewhere close to $25 million over the next couple of years. And there's nothing stopping him in a couple of years' time from then going the conventional route and going to tour Q school yeah, he's probably going to miss out in the 2023 majors. He's probably going to be ineligible for the Ryder Cup. But at age 22, uh, I certainly think time is on his side. I do love that you went young and I'm going to go old. Is that fair? I don't know. Pat Perez. Let, let's just go with it. Let's go with seasoned uh, twilight of his career. I, I just think Pat Perez is living high. Look, we've seen it throughout the course of this short and lived season that no one is happier than he is. He came over. He guaranteed money that he's talked about really since the start and he's made four million dollars actually just on the golf course that separate the guaranteed money out of that three million of that four million came in the team event so you get an idea of how badly he's played in portland he finished three rounds at eight over par that included a final round 80 and boston none of his three scores counted towards the team total so he's very much writing some coattails he's very much catching some checks and i think he's very happy with his situation. And, and again, to put this in context, in 2021, when he only won $1.2 million by comparison, only. Only. 32 events that season on the PGA Tour, 32. He's played seven. He's already earned $4 million. No one is happier than my boy, Pat Perez. All right, now we're going to turn to the losers. You're going young again on this one? You are, aren't you? I'm going young-ish. The biggest loser to me, and I think it's actually quite obvious, is Bryson DeChambeau. This was the dude who was the content king in 2021 i still want like a recount of how he didn't win the pip we talked about him every day for 52 consecutive weeks and this year it's like he's disappeared he's playing on a tour with no world ranking points with a smallish streaming audience and i was trying to think of a way to equate this this is essentially rex like patrick mahomes going from the chiefs and then playing for like stanford high school and his game's only being available to those in the state of Connecticut. It's a drastic drop-off in exposure. I think he was a significant loss to the tour, not just because of the caliber of his game, but just like the weekly drama and interest that he brought on a weekly basis. Obviously, Bryson now has 100 million reasons to be happy, but I think after the turbulent 2021, uh, it wouldn't surprise me at all if he was a little bit starved for attention. Why are you going to throw shade at Stanford High School? I bet they have a very good program at Stanford probably, High School. Probably better than the team that you're fielding in Longwood, aren't you? Uh, like Brantley's seen better days. We're coming off a three-game losing streak. I don't want to talk about that. I am going to go older with my loser as well. And I'm going to go straight to Henrik Stinson. And we can have an extended conversation about how this is going to land the suspensions, live golf, the fight that's going on right now in professional golf, and how it's going to rob really some European stars, some staples. We're talking about Sergio Garcia, Henrik Stinson, Lee Westwood, of really their opportunity to shine in that event. I, but when it comes to Henrik, you look at what he gave up, a Ryder Cup captaincy. I've done this story before. There is a dollar figure that comes with being a captain of a Ryder Cup. Now, it depends. Not live the, dollar figures. Not live dollar figures. But it, de it does depend on how well you play, if your team wins, how well you coach. But there – it does come with some sort of financial reward, and it also comes with prestige. This was going to cement his career. So I think of all the players I can think of, Henry probably lost the most. All right. We love these rapid-fire sections on the podcast. Let's do this real quick. You have to give me a short answer. Winner or loser, Dustin Johnson? Uh, Dustin Johnson going away. I don't think anybody is happier. Like, look, we can go through winners and losers. Is that a winner Dustin. or a loser? Is Dustin Johnson a winner or a loser? Winner by far. 
I think he's a winner too. He's actually like the viewed now as the benchmark. Like if Dustin Johnson drops out of the top 50 in the world, you got to blow the whole ranking system up. Uh, so I think he is certainly a, lot of money a winner. Too. Sergio Garcia, winner or loser? Loser, because I mean, I think we've talked about this before on the podcast. And Sergio is, is a unique personality. I think he loves to be loved. He loved being in the spotlight. And that's not the case anymore. He has found himself on the wrong side of fans at golf courses, on social media. And I think that impacts him. Loser. The all-time points leader in the Ryder Cup has wind himself out of the Ryder Cup. Louis Oosthuizen, winner or loser? I think a winner because, I mean, I, when you hear the things that Louis has said, look, he wants to go to his farm in Central Florida and just enjoy himself, and this gives him that opportunity. So I'll give him his due. Like, he's definitely a winner. I think he's a winner too. Like, he's probably close to retiring anyway, and now – he can bank a nice check and can retire to his farm, and he's kind of maintained his class uh, and dignity through this entire thing. And I bought uh, kind of an obscure one, Rex. Hudson Swafford, PGA Tour winner, uh, by the way, in 2022. Winner or loser? Uh, loser. And look, I, I look at Hudson in this entire situation as someone who might have buyer's remorse. We've talked about this. I feel like Graham McDowell might have some buyer's remorse because I don't think they fully understood what they were getting into. But if you look at the fact, Brian Harmon, as just an example, and Hudson Swafford used to be very close friends. They're really not close friends anymore. So he's he's a loser, at least personally. Hmm. We agreed on all four. Perhaps that wasn't such a good idea. I don't know. Terrible idea. Well, I'm sure we'll find something to disagree about on this week's Golf Central podcast presented by Callaway Golf. Check it out.